All right. Uh, we've ta already made it. We already talked about series circuits. Now let's talk, take a second to talk about parallel circuits and how they work. Parallel circuits are a little bit different. Um, and so a series circuit, I was able to take my finger and go all the way around without picking up my finger. Well, this is an example of a parallel circuit where when I leave the battery with my finger, I come to a point where it's a juncture or a, what, what they refer to as a node. And at that node, you either have to go this way or you have to go this way, but then it meets back and goes into the battery. That, this is an example of a parallel circuit. So what we want to do is, again, uh, I'm not going to ask a specific question um, but on this one, but I will work through the following problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up my table exactly like I did on the previous problem. I'm just going to say V that, below it I'm going to say I total, R total. And again, just for a quick review, the voltage of the battery is just simply that, and so therefore I know what the voltage of the battery is. It's telling me in the problem. I know what the, the, the I total is, the current coming out of the battery here, so that's what we refer to as I total. And R, and we don't know that, R total is simply the total amount of resistance of these resistors, which we'll get to in just a second. So now we've got V1, I1, and R1. V1, again, is the voltage drop across resistor 1, so it doesn't matter which one I call. R1, I'm just going to call that R1 and this R2. So therefore, oop, that's R2. So therefore, voltage 1 would be the, if I had a voltmeter and I put it right here, what would that voltmeter read across that? Which we don't know. The current, I1, would be the current running through this branch of the parallel circuit. That's what we would call I1. So basically, the current running through resistor 1. That's what we're, that, we don't know what that is. And so basically if I were to put an ammeter right here, what's that ammeter read? And then resistance of one, we do know that's a two ohm resistor, like so. Then we go voltage two, I2, and then R2. And so then we've got, uh, we, again, voltage, volt V2 would be the voltage drop across this resistor. The I2 would be the, this would be I2, well, that's, like if we were to put an ammeter right here, it would be the current in that branch. And then R2 is a 4 ohm resistor, just like so. So now, let's work in on filling in the blanks. And so, what you need to know is the following for a parallel circuit. Let me get this guy out of here, and we'll slide it back. So for parallel, it's a little bit different ballgame. Because the voltage of the battery, check this out. Basically, with a series circuit, it had to go through each resistor. And so therefore, each resistor is going to have to add up to be the total amount of the voltage. However, here, let's take my finger here. If I were to go through this circuit, I go, do, 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 and then I have to make a poor choice. It's a fork in the road. And so let's say I go this way. So I come through resistor 1. If I'm an electron, I'm moving this way, I move through, uh, through this, uh, this charge is moving through resistor 1, and then it comes back here, and then it's going to go here. So the question is, how many resistors did it touch on its way back to the battery? Well, one, because if it's, the charge is moving this way, it goes this way, and then it goes this way, just like that, it's only going through one resistor. So therefore, if it's putting out 4 volts here, then the voltage drop across resistor 1 has to be 4 volts which we'll get to here in a second. What's the voltage drop across resistor 2 have to be? Well, if I come this way and I make my other choice to go this way, notice there's only one resistor in that path. So is there, therefore, the voltage drop across resistor 2 also has to be 4 volts, which we'll get to here in a second. I total. So I, I total, if I were to come back here, the I total here, the current coming out of the battery has to be equal to, here's a branching point. I1 and I2 will not be equal unless the resistance of resistor 1 and resistor 2 is equal. If they're not equal, which is this the case, then simply the sum of I2 plus I, I1, the current coming into each branch should equal the total amount of current going into the branch. And that just makes sense. And so therefore, I total is equal to I1 plus I2. Now this is the one that may not make sense. What I will say about uh, c uh, series circuits is real quick. I'm going to pull this back over here. 
my individual resistors was two and four ohms, okay? Leaving me with an R total of six ohms. So what that means is my individual resistance is less than my total resistance. I mean, that's just obvious, right? Well, not in a parallel circuit, because in a parallel circuit, when you keep adding resistors in series, or excuse me, in parallel, as I add more branch and more branches, what actually ends up happening is your total resistance decreases. You're like, well, how on earth can that be? Well, if I can somehow increase the amount of flow, what that, what that would mean is, like, every time I add a resistor, that means more resistance is more current is going to have to be coming out. So what that means is, think about it this way. If you have, if I keep adding resistors, okay, I keep adding resistors, and that means my total current is going to be changing. Well, if I have them in a, in a, like a toll booth or something on a highway, several people can get through it if you have multiple terminals. But if there's only one terminal, there's going to be a lot of resistance. It's going to take forever for every car to get through there. However, at a toll booth, if you have several things, stalls open, it's going to go much quicker, therefore decreasing the total resistance of that and increasing the current. If we need to talk more about that, we can. But this is the equation for the R, to R total. It's reciprocal. And so what that means is 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1, which is plus 1 over R2, just like that. And so I'll give you an example of how that actually gets bigger than the individual resistances. So first off, we already made some points about this as we're filling in this table. The voltage drop across each resistor has to be 4 volts here because V1 is equal to V bat, which is equal to V bat, or, v, or which is equal to V2. All of those guys are equal because the voltage coming out of the battery has to be equal to the voltage being dropped by each parallel branch. Okay. So now the question is, can I come through and figure out the rest of them? Well, I absolutely can. Um, now I could figure out I want an I2 and stuff like that. However, I want to take a second to calculate R total using the reciprocal way so I can give an example. So in this problem, I would say one half, so one over R1, which is one half, plus one over four ohms is equal to one over R2. Total. Now, a lot of times you'll be given examples that aren't easily addable, so let me just show you what's going to happen. In your calculator, you're going to say, okay, 1 divided by 2 plus 1 divided by 4 is 0.75. And then you're going to say, that's my answer. However, that is not your answer. That is not your answer because that's equal to 1 over our total. That's ohms. 1 over R total. I want R total to be able to plug, plug in there. So all I need to do is simply take the reciprocal of 0.75. So therefore I take the reciprocal of that, so 1 over 0.75, that is 1.33 ohms. And so therefore that is 1.33 ohms, like so. So check this out. My total resistance is less than my individual resistances. It's crazy to think about, but it's true for parallel. If you want to add resistors in a way that's going to decrease the total amount of resistant, resistance, then you want to add them in parallel. Okay, now let's go back and fill in the rest of this table and see if everything works out. So my, again, my equation is V is equal to IR, that's Ohm's law. If that's V is equal to IR, then I've got V and I've got R. Well, V4 is equal to I times four, Therefore, I divide both sides by 4. This should be 1 amp. Here, I've got V1 and I've got V2. I just simply divide them again, so therefore that should be 2 amps. We've got the same thing here. 4 divided by 1.3. I bet I know the answer. 1.33. You get like 3.0075. So I'm just going to write 3 amps and get... Get a load of this. this. is why I love circuits. You can check your answer. My total amount of current coming out is 3 amps, and then it breaks off here. My current running through branch 1 is 2 amps. My current running through branch 2 is 1 amp. The sum of those two currents here should equal the total amount of current, which it does.
Hopefully this helps on parallel circuits.